have had, well, hey, hey, y'all. <laughs> we have had several days of rain. Just, it's still windy, but the sun is shining now. And I'm so thankful because we have had days of rain. And it has made things a mess. Um, I'm going to show you. One of the coops, every time, or the runs, every time it rains, it just gets so nasty. It's one of the reasons why we're moving them when we build the new coop. Let's just go out here. Before I do, I'm going to grab these shavings because I'm going to put some shavings in there to dry it up. Oh, no. What have you got on your foot? So, I'm seeing that this one right here... She's got something on her foot. What is on your foot, baby? Don't pull at it, just... Touch those right there, see if you can cut. There you go. That's better. Is that better? I'm going to go ahead and take the shavings out with me because we'll need them in that coop that's a mess. So we're going to be fighting the wind. That's just going to be part of it today. Recently, recently in a video, I was talking about the reality of homesteading and animal husbandry and just living the way we live. And today is just a good opportunity to show you a little bit more of that. There is so much excitement that comes with this, but there's also like tough days and tough times. And uh, I think it's good to see that too, like dealing with an absolutely muddy chicken run. A coop that has not been finished being built. And y'all, sometimes when I look at stuff like that, I feel a little frustrated. Like, why have we not, why, why is this not done and that not done? And I want to do this and why aren't we doing this yet? But then when I stop and I think about how far this little bit of land has come just in the last two years, I'm reminded, like things are put back into perspective. And I'm reminded of just how far we've come. And that it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. We started working on this coop and... The weather got bad we got busy it's gonna get done i just it had to wait but it's gonna get done just like so many other things around here uh, and sometimes i think we just want it to happen like that and in reality it takes some time so this run right here it doesn't get as wet it doesn't hold as much water as this one does it doesn't matter how much pine shavings and um pine straw and what, it doesn't matter how much we put in there, it always holds water in this spot, so it's got to move. I'm gonna get some shavings put in it right now, though, to dry up some of the mess. Thank you. Mom, Mom, I think I got you. I think I got you. Nobody gets muddy One of them decided to jump on my back and got mud all over me. Oh, these feeders are nasty. What was I thinking not putting my hair up before I came out here? It's a little messier right now than even like normal rain because we had downpours for days at a time. So it's not usually this bad. It just is right now. We got to deal with it.
Now those are rinsed off like, hey, we can use them. <laughs> but it's spring cleaning time and everything has got to get a good scrubbing. They just need to be sprayed off right now. Come on. I need to go check the waters in the little chickens as well and move them onto some new grass today. Unfortunately, with the damp, warm weather, bigger chickens. You all right? Yeah. What happened? The bigger chickens don't seem to have issues with coccidiosis, but those fresh spring chickens that are just going out on grass for the first time, this wet weather is causing some issues. And so I had to give some, we lost a couple of those smaller chickens. So we've been having to give them some horrid and their water, which usually takes care of it. I really wish you wouldn't get on me right now. <laughs> um, I think what I was saying is that the older chickens are more immune to it, but those smaller chickens, it's one of those things that you just have to be prepared to deal with because it's pretty likely to happen. We've had them out for most of the day today. <laughs> They're following me. Um, just letting them be out of the mud and on fresh grass. They think you're gonna feed them. They're chasing you because they think you're gonna feed them. Oh my goodness. Love you too, Winona. All right, everybody is fed. We're gonna check for eggs. I expect they'll be pretty muddy. Something that is really exciting though is some of the chickens that we were waiting to start laying. We've been finding some eggs in here over the last few days. Hey. Is there any more? Oh, look, there's another one over there. We gotta go get it. You see it over there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll reach it. Can you reach it? No. Let me see. Okay, there, you can get it. Okay. Oh, Holding the egg in your hand. All right, let's go see if we can see some more in the other one. Okay. We have a beautiful oh, egg apron, Mom, and I did not bring it out here. So we're gonna, look, let's lay these right here while we go get the others. Mom. Easy. Easy, that's right, good job. These were a little more muddy, wasn't they? It's a little dark here in the shed, but because we were talking about that new chicken coop, I thought I'd show you. We got two automatic chicken doors. So when we do that new chicken coop, I'm hoping to have it finished in the next couple of weeks. And we're gonna put automatic doors on the coop so that the chickens get closed up at night. We got a picture just a couple of nights ago of a coyote coming through the backyard like it was nothing. So we're gonna put, we've decided to put these doors on that chicken coop so that the chickens go inside of it at night and it closes up and nothing can get to them. I'll feel better about it. We've gotten several things from Vivor that have always been fantastic. Uh, matter of fact, <laughs> when we go places now, the kids will notice Vivor products. Uh, we were in a restaurant and they noticed an ice cream maker that was Vivor. When we were at Ruby Falls, they noticed some caution signs that were from Vivor and pointed it out. I know that these doors are going to be fantastic and it'll make me feel a lot better having them on the chicken coop. Thought I'd show those to you. Now, the only thing left to do out here right now 
is to move those little chickens and check their water to see if they need some more medicine and some fresh water. Well, I had to get a shower after that. Like I mentioned, it was worse today than normal. We have had a solid week of rain, and that's meant going out in the pouring rain to feed animals and make sure that they have somewhere safe and warm and dry that they can be. And I'm just so glad that the sun is shining. The wind is a little, it's a little frustrating to be out in the wind especially when you're trying to film and stuff but you know what it doesn't matter like we'll work with it because it's helping to dry up a lot of this extra water and i'll take it Good to have the extra shavings down in there that looks so much better it's dried up and it's not muddy for them the little chicks are on new grass with them being the size they are they only have to be moved every couple of days as they get bigger uh, that chicken tractor could be moved every day. Those chickens won't be staying in there, though. They're going to be going in a different coop, and then meat chickens will be going in there before long. We've just kind of used it as a transition right now. I don't know how much I got. My battery ended up going dead, and I just had to keep going. <laughs> but I did. We got them moved. Fresh water with medicine in it. And I didn't share all of this today to be like, oh, it's so hard. Oh, it's this, that, and the other. My reason for sharing this is, yes, there are times where it's hard. You have to deal with the mud and the rain and the sickness and the loss. But if it wasn't worth it, do you think I'd still be doing it? Even when it's hard, it is worth it. There is so much good that comes from it, so much benefit. I see why we're doing this. Having my children learn from it. If it wasn't worth it, do you think I'd still be doing it? It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, and you're know, talking about the like frustration of seeing unfinished projects. I know I t touched on that a little bit. And where I was going with that and kind of what I wanted to elaborate on that is this place just a couple of years ago, what we're doing, it was just a dream. And now look, all of these chickens and raising a lot of our own food, our own meat chickens, uh, growing and preserving pretty much I would say at least 90% of our own produce it's just that was just a dream a few years ago this place where my home is was completely overgrown just a few years ago and now there's gardens and there's animals and there's places for my children to play there's there's a home here and we are building a life here so Putting, thinking about those things, when you when you start to feel a little bit stuck or you wish that you were a little further than you are, think about where you've come and what you have accomplished. And it puts things into perspective. Well, I'm gonna have to go in out of this wind. Let it finish drying my hair. I have to head in though because we've got a ball game tonight and I gotta finish getting ready for that and get everybody out the door. I love you. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.